Okay, boys and girls, today we are going to be talking about a very fun subject that a lot of people probably don't want to address or won't be the most happy that we're talking about. And that is today we're looking at full tang knives versus non full tang knives. And are full tang knives stronger than their non full tang compatriots or uh, colleagues, if you will, are these knives such as the SRK, many of Mora's knives, are they, because they're not full tank, weaker blades and less worthy of being utilized or carried in the wilderness? That is the question we seek to answer here today. So before we jump into this, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and check out the Patreon. It all helps the channel a ton. But now let's talk about full tang knives versus non-full tang knives. So to give you guys the answer to are full tang knives stronger than non-full tang knives, the answer is yes and also no. And let's dive into that to start off with. So the first part is the terminology. Now a full tang knife of course is a knife that has an exposed tang either at the very end of the handle or throughout the handle something like this Falkneven A1 is a good example of a full tang knife that for the most part you can't see the tang but it does have a protrusion at the end signifying the full tang there and that it exists. Now, where things get a little bit more complicated is with non-full tang knives. And the reason why is with a non-full tang knife, you cannot physically visualize the tang of the blade. Therefore, you really don't have any clear indicator of how thick the tang is, how far it runs within the handle, and essentially, you know, if there's any type of if there's any type of differential from the tang of the blade once it enters the handle. And uh, that can lead to some weakness, or if the tang is quite long in the handle, it really isn't too big of a deal. So I think where a lot of people get a lot of their, their understanding that non-full tang knives are weaker is with cheaper earlier on knives that were, you know, very much rat tail and ran just past the uh, kind of beginning of the handle, you know, the thickness of the, or the length of the tang would run, you know, maybe an extra couple inches, if that, into the handle and then it would stop. And of course, if you have a knife that its tang only runs, you know, two inches into the handle, obviously it's going to be quite weak. So that's where a lot of the initial kind of ID ideology or ideas for non-full tank knives being weak came from. And of course, there were a lot of cheaper Chinese-made knives that fortified that opinion and of course that uh, an unfortunate stereotype. So that is where uh, non-full tang knives kind of come into their uh, issue is because in the beginning there were a lot of non-full tang knives that really were not that much of a tang. They were very much rat tail tangs that uh, did not run the length of the handle at all. So that's probably the primary difference in terminology. Now, of course, like I said, with full tang knives, regardless to the one, whether you can just see the end cap of it or whether you can see the entire tang, such on this, such as on this K-Bar BK-18, where you can see the entire tang exposed. So you know the thickness, you know the shape of the tang, and you know the generalized uh, thickness and overall robustness of that tang. So that is the nice part about full tang knives. You're always gonna know what it looks like and within reason, the level of construction. Now I will say, not to say that this BK-18 or this A1 are prime examples of this, but a lot of ma modern knife manufacturers do skeletonize the tangs, so that does create some weakness. So not always are full tangs stronger, but a lot of times they are just for that reason. So now getting back to the yes and the no of full tangs. So we've talked about the terminology. Now are full tangs getting better and are they generally pretty darn strong? From a lot of my use and experience of quality reputable knives such as the SRK and other knives such as especially a lot of Mora's like this Bushcraft Black here, uh, they are definitely quite strong and quite robust. And I have never had any personal issues with any, like I said, reputable knife that has been non-full tang. Now it is always a general preference for a lot of people to have full tangs, but I don't necessarily think that that is always the best case scenario. And there are quite a few things going 
for the non-full tang knives. Now I do want to say when it comes down to the strength, like I said, full tang knives are definitely stronger than non-full tang knives, but and as a completely hypothetical um, analogy just to help put this into understanding, a lot of times with more modern and more reputable uh, non-full tang knives, uh, oftentimes, you know, these knives, like I said, will not be as strong as their full tang counterparts, but realistically, when it comes down to it, say, you know, this A1 has a, you know, would require, let's just say, um, so for example, and this is completely hypothetical because we don't really have quite the numbers on this, but let's just say you are batoning with both of these knives and it would require, so let's say the hypothetical, uh, you know, force requirement to break the tang or break this knife in general would be 3,000 inch pounds of force required across or onto this blade to break it. Now, if say your SRK was only 900 inch pounds, that would be a substantial, substantially less amount of force to break it. But I think where a lot of people kind of fall off and immediately uh, dog non-full tang knives is they assume that because they are weaker and maybe even substantially weaker that they're immediately going to break. But a lot of times with most of our use cases, we are not going to be exceeding the strength required to break this knife. So say, like I said, it was 900 inch pounds to break this knife over 3000 for that one. These are hypothetical numbers, but uh, you know, oftentimes things like but say that uh, batoning would only be 600 inch pounds. Now, are you coming close to the amount of force required to break this knife? Yes, but if that's your maximum force, you're still coming well within reason or well within reasonable limits of force required to break. You're still coming well within the force that it would be reasonably required to break this knife. And so I think a lot of times uh, non-full tang knives are just automatically written off as weaker because they are physically weaker. But you do have to keep in mind what your use case is. And also, most importantly, what the reasonable ability to use that knife is. Oftentimes people go to things like the SC Azula, two or the uh, some smaller neck knives and they choose full tang neck knives because they are stronger but in all reality if you have a blade that is only two inches long you're realistically not going to be able to put enough force or find something within nature aside from maybe rocks to put enough force on the spine of that blade to really test to break it you know and so and so oftentimes, you know, a lot of people are chasing after the full tang knives purely because they are more robust and purely because they are stronger. But reasonably, if you factor in, you know, like reasonable strength and reasonable use, a lot of times your non-full tang knives are going to be strong enough to meet whatever odds that they're going to encounter. Now the SRK is definitely a bigger or longer bladed knife. So, you know, the use case for this is going to be a little bit more industrious but still, once again, it holds up just fine. Even things like the Mora Bushcraft Black and several of my other Moras, like the Kunzbul, the Companions, are more than strong enough to hold up to reasonable use within you know, the size of their blade. Now, once again, if the Mora was built or if the Mora Companion or say the Bushcraft Black here kept the same exact features and was you know, built out to eight or 10 inches you know, of blade length, that might be a different case because not only is there more leverage and force being applied to the blade but also you're using or you you would be presumably processing larger pieces of wood with that tool and therefore more force would be required to you know uh, deal with that or process that amount of wood and so in those cases you know it might be a little bit uh, more uh, important to factor in the fact that it's not uh, full tang but overall um, you know with most of these knives they are going to be just fine if you use them you know with any degree of reasonable sanity once again if you go pounding rocks with this bushcraft black or with this srk you might break them but then again you're also probably going to break the blade anyways of any knife that you use to baton through a rock so it's not really a particularly applicable um, use case for the knife. 
So that is essentially kind of the breakdown for me when it comes to non-full tang knives. Now there are a number of advantages when it comes to non-full tang knives that I think are often overlooked. Now granted, like I said, full tang knives definitely are more to the nth degree durable, but factoring that these have a reasonable durability, the other thing that is oftentimes very nice about non-full tang knives is they usually have either better ergonomics or more comfortable ergonomics. As you can tell with both of these non-full tang knives they are fully rubberized so in colder conditions like we have right now they're going to be far more comfortable to use or to hold in colder conditions they're also going to be lighter weight because you do have less steel within the knife and and the last uh, real condition that i really like about non-full tang knives is the fact that you can then begin to roll in things like folding knives now, like I said, folding knives are a little bit of a different discussion between, you know, non-full tang knives, but they are technically non-full tang knives because they are folders. And uh, one of the bigger comparisons that I really like when we discuss about uh, non-full tang knives, especially when it comes down to smaller knives for things such as personal survival kits, maybe truck survival kits and stuff, is that oftentimes a lot of people are led to go for something like an SC Azula 2 because it is a full tang, it's robust bust and it's tough but if you look at both of these knives the Benchmade 556 and the Azula 2 here uh, for example uh, you'll find that you know realistically you could baton this and it will be stronger than the locking mechanism of this Benchmade but because the blades on both of these are so small and the blades in general are about the same size but generally just really too small to realistically use in hard use cases uh, you'll find that I definitely am more of a proponent to the folding knife because of the fact that when you want to put it in a kit or if you even want to carry it the carryability of a folding knife like this is going to be much better because when it comes down to it, um, this Azula, this is its minimum size to carry it safely, obviously. Uh, so this is its minimum size to carry it safely. And the Benchmade 5D6 here, its minimum size to carry it is much, much smaller, about half. And that's because like most folders, you know, it folds in half and therefore its carry size is much better. But when you open it up, you have a longer handle and a just slightly longer cutting edge. The blades are about the same in length, but the blade, the actual cutting edge on the 5D6 is just a little bit bigger and so, or a little bit longer, I should say. Uh, so that is another big advantage to folding knives. And I think something that's often under or non-full tang knives, including folding knives. And I think this is often overlooked and people often, you know, kind of lean on that crutch of, well, it has to be strong, it has to be tough, it has to be durable to the highest degree possible. And there is some credence to it. And certainly you don't want your blades to just simply break on you in the wilderness. But once again, if your blade is going to already be quite small and quite uh, non-usable, for larger tasks, then it really becomes more of a point to focus on carryability and making sure that the knife is, is on you instead of in left at home or packed away somewhere. And so I think folding knives definitely have that advantage. So there are definitely a, a number of pros to uh, non-full tang knives, even fixed blades, like I was saying, and whether it's the lightweight or the better ergos or even the fact that they're just more generally temperature neutral. Uh, of course, full tang knives are, like I said, more durable, usually a little bit heavier and heftier, better for chopping and doing more industrious tasks. But if you don't need the specific uh, requirements for having more industrial knives for things like batoning or chopping, then going with a non-full tang knife is perfectly fine. And I think that there is a lot of notion in the knife community, uh, especially in the outdoor knife community, that you know you really want to lean towards full tang knives. And I know that especially being in the community myself and you know getting or owning as many knives as I have or currently own, you know, there is a push from some companies even as a marketing strategy to say hey you know this knife is full tang it's way strong and you know it's it 
it's full tank so you know it's going to be very strong and a lot of people use that as a marketing terminology and while it's not completely incorrect i think a lot of people just subliminally get into that mindset of well i have to have full tang knives because they are stronger and when i really look back at my experience in using knives especially like these two here the bushcraft black and the srk the reason why i brought them out specifically is i have batoned the heck out of both of these knives and i have a lot of use on them and they are not full tang knives so i can say from experience that you know so long as you're going with reputable brands and reputable knives that have good track records I would say don't necessarily be discouraged by the fact that a knife is or isn't full tang and definitely don't think that you have to have the full tang for the extra strength because oftentimes in most use cases you're not going to be using a knife hard enough to really push even a non-full tang knife to the limits other things to factor in as far as uh, potential weaknesses too i think a lot of people just think that the tang is the only failing point but oftentimes the way a blade is ground the way it's heat treated and having other types of machine work put into the blade so over the course of years we've seen plenty of kind of multi-tool knives that have you know different cuts in the spine for all different types of tasks and if it's done incorrectly or if the heat treat doesn't correspond with that um, if the heat treat doesn't correspond with that type of cut that's made into the spine of the blade that can also create a weakness in the knife and once again that's not necessarily the spine breaking and those are also full tang knives that can fail in addition there are lemons in both categories there are full tang knives that fail and there are non-full tang knives that fail as well doesn't necessarily mean that the design itself is flawed or that these knives aren't to be trusted because like i said i've put many miles on these guys and i have uh really not had any issues with them there's certainly nothing wrong with them now and uh i don't really foresee there being any problem in the future so like i said at the end of the day are full tang knives stronger yes uh like on paper so on paper, scientifically, if you were to put these two to stress tests and, you know, you were to put an X amount of inch pounds of force on the spine of this thing and, you know, get it to break, it would take substantially more force than a non-full tang knife. But in the same vein, the realistic amount of force that's required to break a non-full tang knife is still going to be more than likely much higher than what you're going to put on it. Lastly, summarizing is small blades. I think that it's better to go with things like folding knives than it is smaller fixed blades just because they allow better weight savings, much easier carryability, and especially if you're going to be putting them in something like a survival kit, I would much rather take a folding knife over a fixed blade because I can fit this inside. And I actually have put this little 5D6, of course, taking its pocket clip off inside of an Altoids tin can, whereas you cannot get an Azula even close to the inside of a uh, to fitting inside a Altoids tin. And in fact, if you were to try to get a fixed blade to fit inside an Altoids tin, you would be left with a very unusable knife. So that kind of puts it into perspective. And once again, I think the 5D6 and the Azula 2 are at that point where they're so small that any type of realistic force you would be putting on them, such as batoning, is going to be so inconsequential that you're not really gonna be using this knife for that purpose anyways. So that kind of is the summary to full tangs versus uh, non-full tangs slash folding knives. Um, that's been my experience. I've, of course, these are not the only full tang or non-full tang knives I've used. And like I said, all of the non-full tang knives from reputable companies such as Cold Steel, Mora, and a few others, and a handful of others have been absolutely bomb proof and i've never really been let down by them so if you're thinking about picking them up especially you know ones that are pretty reasonably budget things like the srk and bushcraft black that come well under a hundred dollars i would say go for it they are great knives and don't be deterred by other people's naysaying In my experience they've never given me any issues so there you have it uh, hopefully this has been informative and hopefully this helps you guys as a whole understand knives better and know what to choose for different wilderness applications. As always, God bless and I'm out.